appointed to uh, first on the House Natural Resources Committee and now on the uh, Interior Appropriations uh, Subcommittee. And he's been a passionate and strong advocate for the environment and the wise use of our natural resources. And it's really been a pleasure to work with a member like him who uh, has such passion and commitment. He just sees the environment as the place that we live. And why would we want to harm that? Why would we allow others to spoil the land that we live in and the water that we drink and the air that we breathe? Um, he recognizes the intrinsic value that our natural resources have for us. Of course, uh, his sponsorship of the Utah Wilderness is what uh, made him famous in the environmental community here in Washington. But what stood out the most was his wholehearted dedication, commitment, his enthusiasm. It was exciting to work for him. It was fun to work for him. And he was always willing to take on another project, no matter how big. In fact, the bigger it was, the more challenging, the more excited he was about taking it on. He was not a, a representative who sat around in his office. Uh, he would call me from the field, call me from hazardous waste sites, where he was meeting with citizens and said, Ned, I'd like you to come down here and meet me, because I, I'm here meeting with some citizens who are uh, really concerned about the pace of this cleanup, the extent of it, and uh, I think you need to hear directly from them. <laughs> It was not the first time he went to Utah, but it was the first time we had him down at Zion. He went to a, a Wilderness Society Board of Governors meeting, and he was to speak there. And he got in late at night, and I had breakfast with him the next morning, and he's looking at me, his face is just, just shining, just absolutely radiant, saying, I don't believe this place. This is the most beautiful place I've ever seen. I'm crazy about this. Oh, this is just wonderful. And he was just... And that's typical of Maurice's enthusiasm. But uh, that afternoon, after we had had the meeting and he had given his speech, some people suggested things for him to do. And I said, no, let's show him Zion. He's only going to be here a couple days. And he got out, and we were walking around there. And um, his, one of his nicknames, of course, is Congressman Elvis because of the hair, but also because he was very fond of Elvis. And so he and the mayor of Springdale, Phil Bimstein, um, walked out into the Virgin River, where it's shallow there at the end of the, uh, the Narrows, and um, did dueling Elvis imitations. And uh, a bus of German tourists pulled up, and they all uh, took pictures and videotapes of it. We don't have pictures of it, but the German tourists do. Um, it was, M Maurice won the competition. Uh, Phil's a musician, but, but Maurice does a much better Elvis imitation. <laughs> issues that he goes up against are pretty big. You know, I remember he did a lot of work in the 80s going after organized crime in the waste carting uh, industry. Um, you know, not a lot of people would take that on. He followed that investigation. He uh, had uh, you know, private, he, he employed private investigators to get to the bottom of it. And uh, he was dealing with really uh, unsavory characters who were willing to, to pretty much do anything to, to make money. And uh, he uh, was really putting his own life at risk. Uh, I think he was uh, going through, through security uh, to fly uh, from Washington, D.C. back to his district or from the district to D.C. And uh, he, it was discovered that he, had a, he was carrying a handgun on him <laughs> and that he'd forgotten to, uh, to, uh, to disclose to the security officials. So uh, he was doing that because he was uh, following the problem where it went. He was, you know, he was a crime fighter as well as an environmental champion. Was doing it fearlessly, courageously, and uh, people people were brought to justice 
as a result of that. One of the things I uh, most remember is in the uh, mid-1990s, actually, um, when Maurice was a member of the Natural Resources Committee, the, the Republicans had dropped the name Natural from the committee, and it was just a resources committee, and the Utah delegation had wanted to uh, push through a uh, bad wilderness bill for the state, and Maurice almost single-handedly prevented that bill from coming to the House floor. We were in a very tough position with the Utah bill because the new chairman of the Public Land Subcommittee was Jim Hansen from Utah, who was determined to, um, first of all, to settle the issue, and secondly, to settle it in a way to keep wilderness acres to an absolute minimum in Utah. All of a sudden, he scheduled his own version of the Utah Wilderness Bill, which was, I believe, a million acres or maybe less, uh, for action the following Tuesday, and we received word of this Friday afternoon. At the time, we had about 115 co-sponsors of our bill. Uh, we would need 218 to win, and we were in the minority in the House. So we had from Friday until Tuesday to put together a majority. On Tuesday morning at 9.30, uh, Jim Hansen's office issued a statement that he was pulling the bill from the floor because he had to see his dentist. Actually, it was because he didn't have the votes. The real key to our victory, uh, I knew better than anyone because I was receiving the calls all day Monday and into the morning on Tuesday of why people were going to back us. In one call after another, I would hear from people and they would say, you know something, we don't care about Utah at all. Our constituents aren't interested in it. They don't care about public lands. We're not going to be able to do anything with this, but we're backing you. And we're backing you because we like you, because Maurice is a nice person, because he's been good to us, because he helped us with our project, because he was kind to us. That's what I always like to tell environmentalists. It's, you have to have the people with you to win. And Maurice had the people with him because he's a great guy. I think, I think the, the entire Congress, probably even both sides of the aisle, although Morris is a, you know, he's a good uh, progressive Democrat, but I, but I know that people on both sides of the aisle respect him, and, and you can't help but like him. You know, he's, he's kind of the last of that old school. He's a, a Obviously, a dedicated Democrat, um, but he worked with uh, people who even disagreed with him. Um, he has followed that old saying, uh, disagree without being disagreeable. And, uh, you know, that's a commodity uh, that's uh, vastly being lost in the Congress. <laughs> most uh, memorable moments was uh, on the uh, Interior and Environment Appropriations Committee when uh, he says, uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to bring up the issue of fracking. Well, it was the first time I had ever heard the word. And, you know, uh, uh, my first reaction was, gosh, this is uh, some kind of you know, interpersonal uh, uh, relationships that uh, New Yorkers are engaging in today, you know, so it's, it must it sound like some kind of funky term, and, and but it was Mar, so he, you know, we love him, and he can do, we respect him so much, he can talk about anything he wants, I says, well, uh, you know, go for it, uh, uh, Mr. Henchy, and then 
he explained to all of us uh, what uh, was involved with fracking and how important it was and why it was a very uh, uh, integral issue to uh, uh, in the area of energy and protection of the environment. He resources that we have in the Hudson Valley are spectacular. Uh, the Hudson Valley and the Hudson River have received virtually every federal designation available for water bodies and lands of national significance. It's a national heritage area. And it's an American Heritage River. Uh, the estuary has been declared of national significance by the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Maurice has been engaged in getting each of those designations because they either bring uh, additional resources to bear or they focus attention on the importance of, of the region and the absolute criticality of maintaining and, and, and fighting for the 
integrity of, of that. I think this is an exciting new chapter for him and uh, potentially really wonderful for the people of New York because you have someone with his breadth of experience, with his perspective, who can be a full-time citizen. I would just say thank you. It's so amazing to work for you. You are a champion who's going to be missed deeply. And I will never forget, I will always treasure the time that we've worked together. Maurice has a tremendous legacy in the Hudson Valley and New York State and many areas of, across the country uh, will carry the benefits of, of his vision uh, and his aggressive advocacy for, for many generations to come. Uh, we will miss him, but he will not be forgotten. I hope that people can carry on his legacy, not just in Congress, but elsewhere among staffers, among environmentalists, among people who work. And to remember that his legacy was not just in standing up for public lands or not just in standing up against toxins or anything like that, but that it was in serving the people and caring about the people. Never forget the people. That's what we're here for. That's what Congress is here for or should be here for. And uh, that's what he wanted people to have, to have a good life, the kind of good life where they can enjoy the prosperity of our country and the beauty of our country.